Welcome to Parking and Transportation Services Virtual Student Town Hall. We are glad you can join us today. We have a lot of information to go over, so we will be explaining numerous changes that are coming to the Campus Parking and Transportation Program. We will also be addressing the questions that were submitted to us in advance. And if there is time left at the end, we will take questions from you using the Q&A feature, feature. With us today on our end are Executive Director Neil Hart, Director Bob Rowan, and Assistant Directors Yvonne Feedy, Alan DeFord, and Paul Lozano. Together, this group has more than a century of parking experience. With that said, I will turn it over to Neil Hart. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. Um, we're gonna start with Bob Rowan. He's gonna take us through some uh, changes uh, regarding to the registration process. Uh, thank you very much, Neil, and welcome everybody uh, and happy Earth Day. Um, what I wanna talk to you a little bit about, uh, first uh, we'll take a look at the, uh, the rates. This is the rate chart for uh, this coming year. Um, we will be talking a little bit more about the uh, about parking rates and some of the permit changes a little bit later. What I want to um, concentrate on mainly here is the uh, the registration process. We have opened uh, priority registration. It opened on uh, April 14th. It will close this Sunday, uh, April 25th at 11:59 p.m. Um, <clears throat> what priority registration is? is uh, U of H students that have a, a, a current active parking permit can go to our uh, web portal and they could um, choose, I want to renew my current parking permit uh, and that will renew the same permit uh, that they have this year for next year. Um, if you do not want to, uh, to renew the same permit if you want to switch permits uh, to a different uh, garage or maybe go from one zone to another. Um, you can wait till uh, regular uh, registration opens up and you can choose that permit uh, when regu regular reg registration opens up, which will be on Monday, um, April 25th. Um, so for students that uh, that don't have a current permit or want to change, um, they can just get online on the 26th and purchase their permit. Um, we are not doing the wait list feature like we did last year this year. It's going to be a first come first serve. Um, so um, how you register is you uh, go to the uh, parking portal on uh, Access UH, uh, go to get permits and you'll come to the permit option screen. What I want to point out here is, is that we got we have two academic year of permits showing. We have the 21-22 uh, uh, academic year, which is for next year, and then we have the 2021, 20, uh, which are for permits for this year. So if you're signing up for next year's permit, make sure you choose from the 21-22 list of permits. Um, if you're a new student that's coming in for the summer and you need a permit for this year, you would go to the 21 uh, 2021 list and pick from there for this year, but then you'd have to go to the other list to pick for next year if you're going to be coming back next year also. Um, if you sign up for a permit uh, for next year now and you find out later in the summer that your class got changed um, and you're no longer needing to come on campus, uh, you do have until the 12th class day of the fall semester in order to cancel your, your parking option to get a full refund. After the 12th class day, refunds will be done on a prorated basis uh, based on the time and day that you turn your permit into us. Um, we do have a special website for our friends uh, with uh, WCJC. Um, you can access that website by going to the, the parking webpage, uh, clicking on uh, camp, uh, parking on campus, then click on the Sugarland parking link and within that page you'll see this page uh, where you could have a link to the uh, to the WCJC page which, which explains uh, how you go about registering. You have some a little bit of different rules uh, than, than the regular uh, UH students do. So but if you have any questions on this, feel free to contact us either with our uh, 
through the um, email address or through uh, the phone. Uh, I think with this, I'm going to turn it back over to Neil and he'll talk about some zone parking. Great, thank you, Bob. All right, so uh, one thing that we just wanted to make sure all of you were aware of is that this upcoming academic year, we will transition from student zones to zones for all. So what that means, uh, it doesn't really affect those of you that have already parked in a, a student zone. It will just add in the faculty staff ungated parking that was already adjacent to those zones. And so now faculty and staff will be will be uh, purchasing zone permits as well. And so again, uh, you when you park in your zone or any any location for that matter, you have to from Monday through Thursday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. You have to park in your assigned area and then after that you're able to um, move around campus and park in any, any ungated uh, parking spot provided it is not a metered reserved disabled loading or fire zone. So I uh, just wanted we all wanted to make sure that students were aware that they would um, now have zones for all with the faculty and staff. Uh, as you'll see the slides run through, there's a couple of questions already coming in about where's the best place or what type of permit to get. So we'll we'll get to those um, at the end of the at the end of the program. Um, the the one thing for those of you that are residents, it's it's very important to know that that for next academic year there will be no residential uh, increase. So all student zone, all student zone parking and all student garages are are the same price whether you're a resident or a commuter. So um, so there you see the the rate uh, of 750 for garage permits. With that, uh, I will return it back to Bob to talk a little bit about the evening weekend permit rules. Thank you, Neil. Um, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about the evening weekend permit. Um, it's it's not a new permit. We've we've had the permit for a while, but there's was uh, some confusion this year um, with um, the use of the permit, especially during periods that we go to relaxed parking. Uh, we've got several uh, customers uh, email us with questions on that, so I want to just uh, kind of talk about that now. Um, the evening weekend permit. Uh, is a permit that's valid only Monday through Friday after 3 p.m. and then all day Saturday, Sundays and on official university holidays. This goes for any time that we're in lax parking too, whether it's uh, between uh, breaks between semesters, spring break or, or whatever. This permit is restricted to the Monday through Friday after 3 p.m and all day on Saturday, Sunday, and university holiday. Um, doesn't matter if lax parking is in effect or not. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it to, uh, I guess, the Richard, back over to Richard. He's going to talk about text messaging options. Thank you, Bob. Uh, parking and Transportation has just launched a new text messaging system uh, that will allow you to receive text alerts on any of our programs and services. We, uh, we are very well aware that everyone receives many emails over the course of the day. With that comes email fatigue and the possibility that important information can get overlooked. So whenever possible, we plan to use and send texts to those who voluntarily choose to receive them. So how does it work? What you need to do is text the word Coog Park. It's all one word. And it doesn't matter if it's capital letters or lowercase. Um, it's not case sensitive. Text Coog Park to 55744. That's 55744. Once you do that, you will automatically be sent a link. When you receive that link, click on it and follow the prompts to select the zones, garages, programs, and services you are interested in. As you can see on the screen, there is a whole uh, big menu of items you can choose from to receive text text messages about. Um, and that's it. it. It's a pretty simple uh, way of doing things. Um, 
If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the uh, Q&A on the right hand side and we'll answer them towards the end. Uh, right now, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Assistant Director Yvonne Feedy. Thank you, Richard. You may have seen the uh, the red parking enforcement vehicles that uh, patrol the campus uh, parking lots. Um, some of those vehicles are equipped with um, license plate recognition technology, meaning they are able to drive through the lot and, and simply scan uh, license plates in order to determine whether the the owner of the vehicle has a valid permit or not. Um, and so obviously that sort of technology um, gives us the ability to do enforcement much more uh, efficiently and, and quickly. And so we're, we're moving to the point of having all of our vehicles equipped with that technology. We're not quite there yet, but we will get there eventually. And we will also get to the point where uh, we're going to be transitioning to virtual permits, meaning you will still be required to purchase a permit but you won't actually get a physical permit to hang in your vehicle. All of the enforcement will be done via license plate recognition. And so for those reasons, we're encouraging everyone to please ensure that the um, vehicle information that we have on file for you, the license plate, the vehicle make and model is uh, current and accurate. Uh, because once we get to the point where we have transitioned to all vehicle or excuse me, all license plate recognition and virtual permits, um, you will be subject to citation if your if your vehicle is scanned and it's not shown to be in our system. So we have a lot of folks on campus who, for whatever reason, have a lot of vehicles on their account that they no longer drive, um, whether they're vehicles that they sold in the past or they're temporary vehicles they had added because they were rental cars. So we, we need to get all of that cleaned up. Um, customers are not able to go into the system and, and remove vehicles themselves. We must do that for you. So anytime we have any sort of customer service interaction with you, uh, we will be asking you to, to please confirm the vehicles that we have on file for you. Um, and you can also proactively reach out to us if you know that you have vehicles on file that need to be removed. Um, please contact us and, and we can do that for you. If you need to add a new vehicle, that is something that you are able to do yourself. You can uh, log into your parking account, which is the same place that you will go to uh, purchase a permit, and you can uh, add your, your vehicle info there. Um, I do want to point out that even though we have uh, license plate recognition technology, that does not mean that you don't have to comply with the requirement to have your permit displayed. As long as we are still using physical permits, it is still required that that permit always be displayed uh, hanging from the rearview mirror of, of your vehicle. Uh, we also have a feature where if you have a permit for a garage, uh, you can add your easy tag to your account if you have one. And what that will do is it will enable you to be able to access the garage without having to take your permit off of the, the mirror and swipe it and then put it back. Uh, we have uh, equipment at the gates that can read your easy tag and the gate will automatically open when you drive up to it. Um, you can email your easy tag number or email us a picture of your easy tag so we can take the number off of it to the address that you see there. Uh, add my easy tag at uh.edu. We can add that into your account and uh, you'll be able to use that uh, that feature of getting into the garage with your easy tag. But again, um, just want to point out that even if you do use your, your easy tag to access the garage, that doesn't uh, excuse you from the requirement to make sure that your permit is still properly displayed at all times. Uh, you will be subject to citation if it's not. Okay, EV charging stations. If you have an electric vehicle, we do now have uh, EV charging stations located in two garages on campus. They are in the Elgin Street Garage and the University Gateway Garage. We have a total of 54 spaces. Um, the ones that are in the Elgin Street Garage are located on the second and third levels, and the ones in the University Gateway Garage are all on the first level. Uh, these spaces are for electric vehicles only, and when an EV is parked in the space, they must be actively charging. Uh, they cannot be simply occupying the space if they're not charging. There is also a four hour daily limit, uh, time limit to, to the use of the chargers. 
There's currently no fee to be able to use the charging stations. Um, the only requirement is that you uh, you have to join, you have to become a member of the, the company that offers the, the charging hardware, which is a company called ChargePoint. So you'll go into, go to their website, set up an account, which is all free, and then you'll download their app and, and you'll use the app to activate the charging session um, from your phone. One other thing I wanted to point out uh, before we leave the EV charging stations also is you do have to have a valid uh, UH parking permit to use the EV charging stations, even though there's no fee for the electricity itself. OK, moving on to uh, some customer service issues um, or features. I want to remind everyone that the customer service office, which is located on the ground floor of the university lofts, uh, it's facing Calhoun Road, it's right next to the US Marine Corps recruiting office. We no longer take uh, walk-ins in that office. Everything has to be done via our virtual queuing and appointment system, which is called Queueless. Queueless will allow you to get in a virtual queue if you want to be seen for same day service or you can make an appointment for a future date and time if you'd like to do that. Um, all of the information is on our website as to how to, to utilize QLIS. You can see on the screen here that there's uh, several different means for doing that. You can text UH parking to the uh, phone number that's shown there, and you'll get back a series of, of text prompts asking you for some information and which queue you'd like to join. Uh, once you're in the queue, you'll get um, periodic text messages updating you as to um, how much longer you have for your wait time. And then when you have come up to the top of the line, you'll get a, a final text message asking you to head towards the office at that point to, to be seen in person. Um, and likewise for setting an appointment, if you set an appointment for tomorrow or two days from now, you'll get um, emails and text messages at various points reminding you of your upcoming appointment and then the day of you'll get a text uh, asking you to come to the office to be seen. That way you are you are in a virtual line but you're not physically standing in a line um, at our office which which obviously is is important uh, given the situation that we're in. Uh, bicycle registration. Um, we have a new bicycle registration uh, system that we've kicked off this semester to replace the old system which had been uh, run through the police department. Um, we are still working in, in partnership with police department but you will no longer go through them to actually register your bike. You'll go through our parking portal which is the same place where you go to purchase your parking permit. The bicycle registration is uh, simply a different type of permit You'll go there, you'll click get permits, you'll select that you want a bicycle permit. Um, you'll add it to your cart. It'll ask you for information about your bike, make, model, color. Um, there's also an opportunity to upload a picture of it, which we encourage you to do because the, the whole point of the bicycle registration program is to be able to return stolen bicycles to their to their rightful owners if, if uh, your, your bike is unfortunately stolen. And being a part of parking and, and, and transportation, it also gives us the opportunity to message the owners of bicycles on campus if there's going to be some sort of activity happening where bikes might have to be moved. We can uh, find out who bikes uh, belong to and communicate with you. So when you go through the process in the portal of uh, purchasing, well, it's, you're, you're not actually purchasing it, it's, it's free, there's no charge, but you will go through the process as if you're purchasing a permit. Put it in your cart, you'll see that it's a, a zero dollar charge, and you'll check out. And at that point, you're assigned a bike permit number that will be on your file just like your car uh, permit number is. And you'll need to come to the loft's office to pick up the sticker, the physical sticker, which looks like what you see on the screen there, and affix it to your bike so that um, if the police or, or parking and transportation personnel need to identify who a bike uh, belongs to, we can scan the sticker that's on the bike. And I believe that's it. I will send it to Neil at this point for uh, some of the questions that were submitted ahead of time. Thank you, Yvonne. Uh, well, we got you on here. Can you do a couple things for us? Can you um, 
go ahead and just talk a little bit about Coast, what the Coast program is, talk sure. about how carpools uh, apply to that, and then also conversely, if you're currently in Coast, but you want to get out of Coast to buy a permit, what you need to do. Sure. Thank you. So COAST is our alternative transportation program. It stands for COOGS on Alternative and Sustainable Transportation. And it's a, a menu of incentive programs that we offer to give uh, folks the opportunity to not have to bring a car to campus and park a car on campus. So if you decide you'd like to join COAST, uh, the only requirement or the only stipulation is that you cannot purchase a parking permit as well. So it's one or the other. Um, the largest component of the COAST program is our Metro incentive. If you're a Metro COAST member, what you receive is a fare card loaded with $27.50 in fare money per month. And it's reloaded once a month once your balance gets down to $4. So basically it's, it's free money for you to be able to, to ride Metro to get to and from campus instead of driving. Um, and that is, is not money that ever has to be repaid. But like I said, for the duration of the time that you're in the program, you're not able to purchase a, a, a parking permit. We have uh, several other incentives that are part of the COAST program. The second biggest component is the carpool incentive. Um, if you carpool with a total of three people, then you can, have, you can purchase a uh, carpool permit at 50% off the uh, faculty staff garage rate. Um, so it's 50% off that rate and then it's further divided by the three people in the carpool. Um, so you're getting uh, a great deal on that. And it's even lower if you have four people or more in your carpool, then it's 75% off the cost of the permit. Um, some of the other incentives that we have, the details are all uh, on the website. You can go to uh.edu slash coast. Uh, we have Uber, an Uber uh, subsidy that we provide if you, if you can make use of using Uber. We have one for Zipcar. We have one for, for biking. Um, and like I said, all of the details are on the website. Um, if you are currently a member of COAST and, and you would prefer to purchase a parking permit for the upcoming semester, you will have to contact us so that we can disenroll you from COAST before you'll be able to uh, purchase a permit. If you go to the parking portal and try to purchase a permit without doing that, you will get a message that says that, sorry, you cannot purchase a permit because you're in COAST. Uh, for those who would like to join COAST, you can contact us at, at coast at uh.edu. Um, you'll make an appointment to come to the office and then we can have you fill out the paperwork so that you can join COAST um, either as an individual or if you'd like to join as a carpool, you and, and the members of your carpool will have to come to our office and fill out that paperwork to, to join COAST. Um, COAST enrollment is fluid throughout the year. There's not a specific enrollment period. You can come and go as you please at different times uh, during the year. So if you decide later on in the semester that COAST isn't working out for you, then you can you can disenroll and you can purchase a, a parking permit at that time, which would be for a, a prorated price. Um, or vice versa, you can um, join Co COAST, um, or excuse me, purchase a permit uh, at the beginning of the year and then decide later on that you'd like to return that for a prorated refund and, and join COAST. You can do either of those, those things at any time during the school year. Did I hit everything you mentioned, Neil? I believe you did. Thank you. Sure. All right. Uh, so we're going to just sort of go through the group and answer some questions that have been previously submitted as well as the ones that are popping up now. Um, bear with us. We're going to try to get to every question. If if it's of a specific personal nature, we might answer it generally here, but please uh, email us at parking at uh.edu if you have a specific question about your 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 situation and, and we'll be more than happy to to respond there so uh richard if you don't mind i'll sort of lead here and, and uh throw the questions to the group is that all right that works for me all right uh bob if you can just go back over one more time the evening and weekend permit um, just to make sure you know that everybody understands that the time frame of it and it, it, that you don't need two permits, but if you if you have the weekend permit, what that means. 
Sure. Yeah, the, the evening weekend permit is a, it's a permit specifically uh, designed to uh, to serve students, faculty, staff who are only on campus evenings and weekends. So it's it's limited to in its use. It can only be used Monday through Friday after 3 p.m. Uh, it can be used from 3 p.m. up until 7 a.m. the the next morning. Uh, it can be used all day Saturdays and Sundays. It can be uh, used all day uh, on official university holidays. Now, an official university holiday is defined as a holiday uh, in which the business offices are closed. So say spring break, for instance, the whole week is not a holiday. Faculty, staff, offices are open Monday through Thursday. The only official holiday during spring break is Friday. Um, so it's not just because the classes aren't in session. It's driven by whether the business offices are open on campus. Um, like I said before, it doesn't matter if we're in lax, relaxed parking mode uh, in between semesters or or during spring break. Uh, the permit is is restricted to those hours and those days that are listed on it. Thank you so much. So if uh, if you if a student had a class on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday from 530 to 7 p.m. And they had no reason to be here before three. That would be a pretty good permit for them to have. Yes, that would be an excellent permit for them to have. And and uh, what is the cost of a evening weekend permit? Uh, evening weekend permit for next year will be a hundred and forty dollars. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, I have you, Bob. Do you want to talk a little bit about? how tech bridge is going to work uh, and as well as remote campus yeah sure um, as you know we we no longer have a, a remote campus parking program um, but when we went to uh, the zones for all uh, concept in uh, rolling faculty staff along with students uh, into the zones on campus um, is sort of left the tech bridge folks uh, without a zone. Uh, so we uh, came up with a, a new permit. It's called the tech bridge permit. Um, right now it's only available to faculty staff for use. Um, however, any student with an active permit on campus, whether it be garage permit, any any type of zone permit, um, evening weekend permit, as long as it's, it's within those hours that we just talked about, they can also park over at Tech Bridge. Um, they cannot park in the uh, area. Um, Karen, do we have the uh, Tech Bridge flyer? If we can show that, that might be. Thank you. Um, so students that, that need to go to Tech Bridge uh, for classes or or you know if they're you know a student worker and they're working over there, they can park in with their with their uh, on campus permit in any lot that has the red dot on it. Uh, the green dots are going to be restricted to the Tech Bridge permit itself. But uh, the red dots are where, where any other U of H permit can park. Um, and then the, uh, of course, the, the golden dots uh, are, are temporary lots that we now have closed. Uh, they're not available for parking. And then the blue dot is visitor parking. If, uh, if you don't have a permit, you have to go over there to park. You would park in the visitor parking and pay the meter uh, while you're there. Is that Great. good enough? Yes, great. Thank you, Bob. Well, well, we still have you on there. Can you talk a little bit about semester only permits versus annual permits? Uh, yeah, we do have uh, semester only permits for the parking garages only. Um, so if you're only good, if you're, if you're going to be graduating uh, at the end of the fall semester, only going to be here uh, for that one semester, uh, you can purchase a semester permit uh, for any of the parking garages. Uh, if you choose to purchase the annual permit for a zone, say, uh, you will be able to turn that permit in at the end of the semester for a prorated refund. But we we do not have uh, semester permits for zone parking. 
Great, thank you. Richard, uh, a couple questions about, uh, is this town hall being recorded and will it be posted on our webpage? And when will uh, it be posted? It is definitely being recorded and we are going to post it on our website uh, within the next few days. So hopefully by uh, the end of the day tomorrow, it should be up there. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Uh, Says, um, we answered that one. We answered the easy tag questions, carpool questions. Uh, just to go over and reiterate, uh, and, and we don't really mean to harp on it, but it's just very important that, that you understand. Uh, we are during the fall and spring semesters, we are always in restricted parking, which means you have to park in your assigned area from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, anytime after 3 p.m. Uh, and anytime on the weekends, with the, with the exception of the night and weekend permit, as Bob explained, you can move to any ungated lot, provided it is not a metered, reserved, disabled loading or fire zone. So you had the flexibility to move around campus. Uh, there was a question about now it, that faculty and staff are going to be allowed to park in the zone. Can you park in faculty and staff ungated spaces? There, there will be no faculty and staff ungated spaces. There won't be any student zones. There will just be a zone and faculty, staff and students all have the ability to purchase a permit for that zone. The, the and, and again, from seven to three, Monday through Thursday, you have to park in that zone. The other thing, even with registering your license plate, even with uh, doing, you know, clearing out your, your old vehicles, you still have to have that permit clearly visible at all times. So please, it's uh, very, very important that it's not one or the other. You need to have that permit visible and you, and you really need to register your, your license plate as well. Um, let's see here. We went over the deadline to cancel. Bob, you want to just one more time go over if, if they go ahead and register for a permit uh, next Monday and they need to cancel it. Just go over the how that that works one more time. Please. Yeah, if, if, if you haven't. Uh, if. If you want to cancel, you have up to, up until the 12th class day of the fall semester. I'm not exactly sure what day that is uh, as far as the date goes, but it's the 12th class day of the fall semester. You can cancel your, your parking and, and get a full refund for the for the price of that permit. Um, after that date, we will start prorating and our proration occurs on a weekly basis. So for each week after that, um, your uh, prorated refund would would decrease uh, in value. Great, thank you. And, and while you're there, can you just quickly update everyone on on how parking and transportation is an auxiliary service of the university and what that means? Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, parking and transportation, like Neil said, is an auxiliary uh, unit, and what that means is that we cannot receive any funding from the state. We cannot receive any funding from uh, tuition. We cannot receive any funding from the university in whole. We can't uh, receive donor money. We have to operate uh, our operations and pay for all of our expenses through the, the, the fees that we charge the users of our service. Um, the biggest bulk of that is parking permits. Um, we also receive uh, money or funding from visitor parking, uh, event parking, uh, of course, parking citations and enforcement. Um, but uh, we, we have to we have to run our program and, and our services off of what we can collect for our services. Great, thank you. Uh, there was a question about if I have a current permit and I haven't used it all year, can I get a full refund? Unfortunately, you can only cancel from this point forward and receive a prorated refund from the time that you submit an email with two pictures of your permit, one of it intact, the other of it cut up into five pieces, 
you email that to us. Once we receive it, we will we will issue a re prorated refund from that point to the end of the academic year. Uh, so just uh, there will be no retroactive refunds. Uh, there was another question about are we putting a cap on the number of people who can get a permit for a specific zone? Yes, we are. Um, the, so once once we reach that limit, the zone will no longer be available. So it's it's very important. And as Bob mentioned, uh, the little difference between this year and, and the last few years is that this is strictly a first come first serve registration period. There there there's not a list your top three priorities. It's 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 strictly going to get the one that you want. So if you see it available, it is available and you can get it. If it's not available, you will not be able to. So this will affect residents. Um, you, need, you know, you need to go if you know you're going to think about living on campus. Go ahead and get the one closest to your residence. We will not have any remaining or leftover for residential students because we took away the residential uh, upcharge there. So it is it is truly first come first serve. The um, Will we consider lowering zone parking rates in the future? As Bob mentioned, uh, as an auxiliary, uh, we set the rates based on our our expenses, based on the needs to, to run the program. Uh, our ultimate goal is to get rates stable. We're going to continue to work on that. Uh, we're going to continue to look for creative ways. Again, uh, it was a small uh, change, but a significant change to eliminate the, the residential rate. We're going to continue to look at different ways that we can uh, set set different rates and still be able to uh, run the operation. The Yvonne or Alan, do you want to talk about the Sugarland campus and the Sugarland shuttle? How do you get a Sugarland permit? Um, how, how can you ride the Sugarland shuttle? Sure, uh, Yvonne, I'll take it. So, okay. By, by the twelfth day of class in the fall semester, we'll begin to issue out the decals for the uh, Sugarland shuttle. So you'll need to make an appointment, uh, the way Yvonne explained, to go over to the loss office. They will verify that you are taking at least one class at each campus, and then they will issue out the Sugarland decal uh, for you at no cost to be placed on your Cougar card to allow you to ride Sugarland shuttle. Great, thank you. It, and uh, I'll note too that shuttle will be running next fall, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. It will not run on a particular schedule, but a, a constant loop. And you can follow us on the UH Go app and track the shuttles in real time live by GPS to get updated ETAs of arrivals. Thank you. And for shuttle service over the summer, there will be no shuttle service Cougar Line or Cougar Ride over the summer semester. Thank you. Yes, sir. Richard uh, or Bob, there's a question of what time will, what time Monday will registration open for purchasing parking? Uh, Richard, what time did you put in the correspondence? I can't remember. We announced at 10 a.m. 10 a.m., okay. So it'll be 10 a.m. So open at 10 a.m. on Monday. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, Richard, do you see any other questions that I'm missing on the on the Q&A? Well, um, I do see one that came in uh, uh, that was submitted in advance about student workers and if and uh, graduate students who work on campus, if they're eligible for a faculty staff permit or if they sh need to get a student permit. Bob. I'm sorry, can you repeat that, Richard? Sure, um, some people have that more than one person has asked if they're a, they are a student worker or they are a student who works on campus in some capacity are they eligible to receive a faculty and staff parking permit? Okay. Um, thank you. Um, the only 
students that are eligible for faculty staff parking are either uh, teaching assistants or teaching fellows, TAs or TFs. Um, they can purchase, well, I guess I should take that back um, because they, they used to be able to purchase faculty staff ungated, but now we have no faculty staff ungated, it's just a zone. Um, so the short answer to that is right now, Richard, no. Um, we, we do make available to some graduate students uh, gated lot parking if it's available, but it hasn't been available for, for a number of years uh, right now. So. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Karen, uh, can you show the slides, the zone slides that show uh, which buildings they are close to? Bob, would you like to, or anybody else, would you like to talk through zone A and give a little bit of context to those buildings and where they are on campus? Yeah, um, was zone A is in the, uh, Northwestern quadrant of the campus. Uh, it's uh, bordered by uh, 45 and Cullen and Elgin. Um, so as you come in, if you're coming in uh, off of 45 and you come down Cullen, um, it's those lots that are on the north side of Elgin uh, would be zone A. Uh, zone B would be the, the big parking lot that's just to the south of Elgin in that same area. Um, people that are in the arts district, those are, are good locations for the arts. Um, athletic district uh, is a good location for, for those in the athletic district. Um, All right. Resident. For residential permit, like near residential areas, that's zone E, F, and D, D, E, and F. Uh, would you say, Bob? And C. Right, and and there's one thing I I, I do want to point out. If you can go to the zone map, uh, Karen, and and home in on uh, zone C. Um, there are going to be a few lots that are zone lots that will be signed restricted parking overnight. Um, and one of those lots is going to be the, the lot 19 David, 19 D. Um, I think those of you that uh, that have been in the lofts uh, for a number of years uh, probably remember we had the same situation across where the new law center building is being built in 19 B. We we had that lot uh, restricted parking overnight. You couldn't park overnight. Uh, the same thing will be, be happening next year for uh, 19D. Um, so I just want to make that for those uh, lofts uh, residents who are looking at buying the zone C permit. Uh, they need to be aware of that. Yes, and, and that's a very good catch, Bob. Thank you for bringing that up. And it will be from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. You'll not be able to park in those lots and it will be it uh, will be very well enforced, so please don't do it. Some of the other ones will be 6C um, near near Cougar Village, uh, there, there, and there will be a few more, but it will be signed with a big, huge sign on it. Um, yeah, 21B, won't, you won't be able to do that as well. So the, the former uh, faculty staff ungated lots. There's a few of them that will will not allow for parking between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. So please, if you're a residential student, please, please, please do not park in those areas. Uh, we'll make sure we put that very clear on our web page. We'll make sure that uh, we get that communication out as well. But but please don't park in those those areas that, that say that. Um, did we and I apologize if I missed it, uh, but did we talk about the residential apartments and what permits that you need to have to park behind the gates at, at Bayou Oaks and other places? Bob, you want to take that? Yeah, no, no, we have not talked about that. Um, yeah, what's going to happen this year, which is a little different than, than years past, um, is um, if you're Parking in the uh, 
the gated area of the uh, our resident halls, Bayou Oaks, Cambridge Oaks, Cullen Oaks. Um, we've always required that you buy a, you know, a, a parking permit uh, to park there. And, and in the recent years, it's been the zone that that you're in, uh, the zone D for uh, Bayou Oaks uh, and zone uh, the uh, E for the uh, Cambridge and Cullen Oaks. This year, um, you can park in those uh, those um, gated areas with any U of H permit. So, if you buy a Zone A permit, you can you can park there uh, when you're at your place of residence. If you have a, a stadium garage permit, you can park in that uh, in that area uh, that you live in. Um, Behind, as long as you're behind the gate. If you're in one of the U of H open lots, um, you need the permit for that open lot. Thank you. Richard, any other questions? You're on mute there, Richard. I jinxed myself there. We do have some questions that have shown up on the live event Q&A. Um, so uh, someone is asking about garage parking and which garages we have on campus that have the light system that indicates where you have an open space and when a space is filled. And yeah, all, all, all of our garages are equipped with the uh, with the uh, the lights and the uh, parking guidance, so. It, it, and yes, and they all are. And while we're on that, while we're on garages, I think it's good to point out that the East Garage slash University Gateway Garage, they are one permit. So it, they are treated as one garage. So if you have a permit for the East University Gateway Garages, you can go into either one of those garages um, and, and your permit allows you access. Did, it, did I say that right, Bob? Yes, you did. OK. And some of these questions may overlap with some of the information we uh, went over earlier, but someone is asking if they get a new car over the course of the school year, how do they transfer the permit information to their new car? All they need to do is uh, go to our uh, their, our parking portal on uh, Access UH and, and register that vehicle and it will automatically be uh, linked to their uh, customer record and their permit record. Um, if they need to remove a vehicle at the same time, they will need to email that information to us. They cannot remove vehicles online, but they can they can add vehicles online. Looking through some more questions here that we may not have already answered. Um, uh, several people have asked in the in this about uh, the process for getting a carpool garage pass. Uh, Yvonne, can you just briefly go over that again? Yes. Um, so the easiest thing to do is to email coast at uh.edu which will put you in direct contact with our program manager who runs the program um, there is paperwork that you'll have to fill out um, and you'll have to have the names and and other information of all of the uh, members who would like to join the carpool um, in previous years we required that all members of the carpool come into the office together for that sign up but last year, with, with everything that was going on with COVID, uh, we did implement uh, a process whereby you could email that information to the program manager and he was able to uh, sign you up just, uh, just via email. So just go ahead and reach out to him and, and he will give you uh, the detailed information, uh, instructions as to what information he needs in order to be able to sign you up for a carpool. Okay, we've gotten another question asking about uh, parking permits. If they, if someone buys one parking permit, is that good for only one car or can they have more than one car on it? Uh, I can answer that myself. Uh, you can add several cars to one permit, um, 
they can only be used one at a time and uh, it, the permits are just not interchangeable between people. You can have more than one car on your permit. Anything you want to add to that, Neil or Bob? No, I, I think you got it pretty good there, Richard. Uh, you know, they're 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 you know interchangeable between vehicles, but not not individuals. Okay. Uh, Richard, just, go ahead. I was just saying, I saw one more. Um, just want to quickly talk about how to appeal a citation. Uh, Alan, are you still there? Yes, sir. So can can you explain? the process to appeal a citation uh, and, and, and make sure that we stress that you can't email them in, that you need to go through it and where that's located, that information. Correct. So uh, it's just like purchasing a, a, a permit. You go through the portal and you look at uh, the link that shows your citations and next to it, it will give you an opportunity to place it in your basket to pay or appeal. Now you'll have a grace period of 10 calendar days from the date of the citation in order to file an appeal. Uh, beginning that 11th day, it will lock you out and that grace period is over and you're no longer able to appeal a citation. Uh, we do not take uh, any appeals by phone, by in person or uh, by emailing in. Uh, by going through the portal, it documents everything that occurs to that that citation. So there is electronic paper trail. Uh, you will file the appeal. You will get an automated email back with what you wrote in that appeal. And then when a decision is made and it's adjudicated, you will get another email back uh, with what that decision was. And all that will be linked on your parking portal in one spot uh, for historical record, which is the reason why we don't allow in-person email or phone appeals. It documents everything and there's no verbal miscommunication. Thank you. Richard. Okay, uh, someone was asking again about the, uh, the text alert program that we just implemented uh, asking again about the number and text code to get texts about parking updates. You just need to text the word Coog Park. There it is on the screen. It's one word Coog Park and you text it to 55744. That's all you have to do and it'll send you a link. You click on the link and then you select uh, which subjects and topics you want to get the text alerts for and you'll be automatically signed up. Great. Richard, if you can, can you talk a little bit about where students can find out information about game day parking uh, and those, what that means to them and, and, and where to go on our website to find that information? Uh, yes, on football game days during the fall, um, and this is more of an impact during uh, a non-pandemic year when we have a full number of faculty, staff, and students on campus. Um, there are certain garages and lots that have to be closed off or blocked off earlier so that it can accommodate uh, football game day parking. So to get that information, we have uh, on our website, uh, you just go to uh.edu slash parking and look for the uh, game day parking um, I can't tell you what it is off the top of my head, what it's called, but I can uh, look for that in a second and then get back to you. Um, and we send out emails to everybody. Let's say uh, Zone F, which is the zone next to the stadium garage, is perhaps the most impacted zone on football games uh, because that's right next to the stadium. So people who have a Zone F permit will be given plenty of notice ahead of time through emails um, and now through text messages letting them know when they will have to move their vehicle out of the lot where they can move their vehicle um, and, and when they can move their vehicle back so neil if you want to take the next question let me look up what the uh, the uh, address is for the game day parking and i'll get right back to you okay let's see here um one question uh, 
about risk of permits running out. So again, permits are first come first serve. Uh, there will more than likely be some zones that when we get into August that will no longer be available. So, so there is a possibility that that a specific location will not be available. But overall, our inventory and our availability of parking will have plenty of parking for everybody. It may just not be your preferred location. So that's why we encourage you to register. Uh, I don't think everybody has to run at 10.01 on Monday. I don't think that's the case at all, but you don't want to get weeks down the road before registering as well. So uh, please, please be aware it is going to be first come first serve and depending on the size of a zone, the shorter time it will be available. So just please be aware of that. Richard, I see you're back. Yes, um, to be able to find um, that information, you go to uh.edu slash parking. On the far left hand side at the bottom of the page, there is a link for special event parking. If you click on that link, it'll take you to several different uh, topics, including the game day parking page. So we just Great. go to uh.edu slash parking and the bottom left hand side. Okay. There you, there you go. So I, I think um, I think one of the, I saw one question pop up, which is a very good one about uh, are the permits mailed uh, out? So in the in the fall, there will the permits will be mailed out. Um, let's make sure that you know they you should receive them in seven to ten business days. Uh, Bob, you want to talk a little bit about the temporary permits? Um, and then the expectation if you do not have it, if you don't receive your permit in a timely fashion. Yeah, sure. Um, we will start mailing out permits around the first part of August. Um, we'll start mailing our first batches out. Um, <clears throat> so if, if you're if you get uh, if you get registered and, and signed up early and you get in that first batch, you should have your permit in plenty of time. Uh, before classes start. Um, if you do not have it, when you get your uh, confirmation email, there, there'll be a link on that uh, that will take you to a, a temporary permit that you can print out and use. Uh, you can use that permit for, I believe it's 11 days, um, and uh, to wait for your permit to arrive in the mail. Um, but, you know, if, like I said, if, if you've registered early, and if you don't have your permit by, say, the second week of August, um, you probably need to contact us and make sure that it got mailed out and then come in and get a get a replacement permit uh, because you should have received it by that time. Thank you. OK, Neil, it looks like it's uh, two o'clock, so um, it looks like we're going to have to wrap up now. Um, but I just want to say thank you to everyone for uh, joining us. Um, we plan to post the video from today on our website uh, by the end of the day tomorrow. Um, and I think after you're done, if you go back and click on the link again after after we're finished, it might already be uh, recorded and you might be able to play it back almost immediately. But if not, then it'll be on our website uh, by the end of the day tomorrow. Um, you can still reach out to us with any questions or concerns uh, by emailing parking at uh.edu. You can call us at 832-842-1097. And you can follow us through our social media accounts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Reddit. And our handle is at uhparking. If there's any, not anything else, Neil, I'm going to say goodbye and tell everyone, have a great day. I agree. Thank you all for joining us. We, we appreciate it. Thank you.